It may seem an obvious contrast. American football, explosive, aggressive, one of the toughest, fastest sports in the world, and ballet, fluid, flexible, the body in motion. But don't be fooled. The demands ballet places on the body are at least as great as gridiron football, maybe greater, but different. Different demands throw up different problems, and they can tell us a lot about the structures that support all of our movements. Every second of our lives, every move we make, there are forces acting on our body. Sure, there's always gravity, and we have to stand up to that, but complex movements like this generate a whole range of extra forces. What stops us collapsing in a heap? The complex supporting structure that we think of as the skeleton, bones, joints, and the ligaments that hold it all together. Even a seemingly simple action involves a huge number of bones. Take the foot alone, 32 bones, each sliding or rotating as we move. But if just standing on tiptoes is complicated, even the simplest ballet exercise involves the whole skeleton. Arms and legs, sure, but look at the movement of the spine, the shoulders and pelvis. And it's not only the number of movements, it's the movements themselves. Successful dancers are much more flexible than the rest of us, and flexibility is all about joints, where bones move relative to each other. And it's joints we'll be looking at in this program. But before we focus in too much, let's make sure we understand the rest of the skeleton. The first thing you have to ask yourself is, what is a skeleton for? Why do you need a skeleton? Take a look at it. First, support, feet, legs, spine, along the body's vertical axis, burying our weight against the force of gravity. Second, movement. Muscles need something to pull against, and that something is our bones. But there's a final thing to bear in mind. Guts, lungs, heart and brain, all soft and vulnerable. So what do our bones do? Provide cages for them. And all of these functions are put to an extreme test in a contact sport like American football. Support, movement and protection. And injuries are a fact of life. On average, 20% of these players will need surgery at some point in the season. But what type of injuries? And are they the same as those suffered by dancers? In sports injuries, sports medicine, we see two different patterns of injury. We see the patterns of injury related to training, repetitive overuse injuries, and we see acute traumatic injuries, which are a result usually of impact or twisting or falling. And I think that you see the opposites in these two sports by and large. Most dancing injuries, ballet in particular, are related to repetitive activity. Most of the football injuries are related to impact, twisting, hitting, contact. Looking at something that goes wrong often tells us a lot about how things should work. It's a big feature of biology. So where are we most vulnerable? At the points where bones meet, joints. Ankles, knees, elbows, shoulders, and wrists, they all work on the same principles. Understand those principles, and you understand all joints. So we'll be concentrating on just two of the most important, the knee and the elbow. Here's Dr. McKayley inspecting a basketball player with an elbow injury. First question, what makes up an elbow? Let's start with the bits we all know about, the bones of the arm. This is what a joint's for, to allow us to move the bones of the arm relative to one another. But what are bones made of? At the microscopic level, you can see there are two components, the dark protein fibers running through a matrix of minerals, like the steel rods in reinforced concrete, hard, but not brittle. But at the joint, the bones come into contact. The bones are coated in a different substance, cartilage. It protects the surfaces of the bones as they slide against each other. But there's something missing. There's nothing holding this elbow together. That's the job of ligaments. They attach bones to bones. No ligament, no joint. Ligaments are made of collagen, the protein in bone, but without the minerals. So this is it. 
the white surfaces of the smooth cartilage. And this is one of the ligaments holding the whole show together. But what about this? Scar tissue caused by falling during a game of basketball. By removing this with a tiny shaver, this elbow can be returned to normal function. Okay, now we know the kinds of things to look for in an injured joint. But are some sports just more dangerous than others? American football probably does have a fairly high rate of injury when you consider it's not only a contact sport, it's a collision sport. People consider the classic football injury as the, uh, you know, the uh, knee reconstruction, uh, where someone blows out their knee, quote, unquote. Certainly, the uh, certain ligaments can tear or rupture, but obviously, you know, if you get hit on the knee, you know, something's got to give. But what's going to give? And how can we find out? Back to Dr. McKay. After any acute injury to the knee, we always get a plain x-ray initially to look for any components of fracture. Because the plain x-rays, of course, show us bone. OK, so it's definitely a knee. Thigh and shin bones, top and bottom. A bit more complicated than the elbow because of the bony kneecap protecting the front of the joint. So, no obvious broken bones, but if the injury isn't to the bone, how can we see what it is if bone is the only thing that shows up on an x-ray? We need a better technique. Magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, gives us a better view. This is a cross-section of the knee. The kneecap is the black area at the top with the bones of the leg below. But the beauty of MRI is it shows the soft tissue, the ligaments, tendons, muscles and fat surrounding the knee. It also allows the surgeon to look at the knee from different angles. Here's a series of views from the front of the knee, first the kneecap, then deeper into the knee, this image tells us that the owner of this knee has not finished growing. This is the area where bone grows. It's only visible when you're still growing. Here we can see the ligaments. With this kind of information, it's much easier to build up a good picture of the structure of the whole knee joint. Here you can see the muscles of the upper leg attached by their tendons to the bones. Remove the muscles and we can see the three leg bones and the kneecap. Remove the kneecap and we can see the four strong ligaments that hold the knee together. Two at the side and two in the center, the cruciate ligaments. Back to the MRI. There's one of the cruciate ligaments. Where's the other? That's the problem. One of those crucial cruciate ligaments in the center of the knee is snapped and that makes the knee much weaker the whole lower part of the leg can move around much more. A classic American football injury, probably caused by a blow on the knee. Or was it? Let's ask the person who owns the knee. Uh, my name is Heather Vigo, and um, I'm having an anterior crucial ligament reconstruction on my knee, on my right knee. I was playing soccer, and some girl we were both going for the ball and she jumped into me and she jumped into my knee and it went in and I heard it pop. Once under anaesthetic, the surgical team prepare Heather's knee by wrapping it in a brown sterile film to reduce the possibility of infection. Even MRIs can only tell the surgeon so much. To confirm his suspicions, Dr. McKayley needs to get inside the knee and take a look with the fiber optic camera. He can insert this right inside the joint. Here, the camera is underneath the kneecap. Medial meniscus, looks fine. And, and this is the with. cartilage on the surfaces Arms of the leg bones. The By moving the camera, Dr. McKayley can spot the offending ligament and see how much damage has been done. Or, or, or injury to the anterior cruciate ligament, in which the majority of the ligament has been injured now. We can see how much the rupture of the ligament has increased the flexibility of the knee. Anyone trying to turn quickly or run with a knee in this condition is in big trouble. But where do you find a replacement ligament? You don't. The body doesn't have a spare parts kit. Or does it? No spare ligaments, certainly, but perhaps a different body tissue can be used. Dr. McKayley is going to use a tendon from a different part of Heather's knee. Remember, Heather can't feel any of this. She's still under anesthetic. And here is the tendon. Once out in the open, you can see what makes a tendon different from a ligament. 
tendons do a different job. They join muscles to bones. So this tendon is thinner, more flexible, and more elastic than the ligament it's going to replace. But won't that make it weaker? Well, that's why Dr. McKaylee is stitching it so that he can use more than one section of the tendon. By looping the tendon up and through the knee several times and attaching it to the bones at both ends, it will do the job. Uh, we take that right off. That's good. So it's clearing it, you see? Yeah. One last look with the camera to check on the replacement tendon. You can see it's made from several strips. From injury to reconstructed knee. A tendon from one part of the joint replacing the ligament in another. And over the next six months, the tendon will change its properties. It will turn into a ligament. Fine in theory, if a bit tough to watch, but how does it feel? It's been like 48 hours since my operation. My knee isn't really bothering me. When I woke up, my knee was moving in this thing, so it was like as soon as I got out of surgery that I was in it. This is going from my leg being straight to a 40 degree angle, and I have to eventually walk up to a, my leg being straight to a 90 degree angle. If I wasn't playing soccer, I wouldn't have got it done at all. But the whole reason I got this done was so I could play soccer again. Soccer and American football are both contact sports, so you have to expect injuries from impacts. But what about ballet? It's hard to imagine dancers getting injured thumping into each other or being kicked on the back of the leg. You'd think the most dangerous thing that could happen is a fall, right? Wrong. Dr. McKaylee also treats dancers' injuries, and they're not caused by falling over. Dancers are the ultimate in repetitive training, particularly ballet. And as a result, uh, a dancer who is training specifically for one role is doing a tremendous number of repetitions with repeated similar forces on that area of the body, on the knee or on the ankle or on the foot. Take a succession of jumps like these. No one jump could possibly generate enough force to break a bone, but repeated enough times and the joint becomes weaker and weaker, like metal fatigue. Bones, ligaments, tendons, cartilage are all at risk. But hang on, why isn't it like weight training? Why doesn't repeating the same movement make our body tissues stronger? Repetitive loading on a body part can indeed make it stronger, but if you go over the edge, of too much, particularly over too short a period of time, you can result in tissue injury rather than tissue growth and strengthening. We're doing a lot of lunges and I just noticed that it felt mm -hmm. like it was... Injuries kind of caused by repetitive small forces are called stress injuries. And that's what's happened to Heidi. Learning a new part, her knee has become injured before the tissues had time to grow stronger. She knows her knee is injured, it's painful. But Dr. McKaylee has to examine her knee to find out if this stress injury is to the bone the ligaments or the well. tendons. <laughs> How's that feel? I, I just feel a little bit. Tiniest twins there. Same In way. fact, it's the bone. Heidi has a stress fracture. Here. Repeated shocks to the knee can create microscopic cracks in the bone. Keep repeating the movement and these cracks can join together. An area of bone starts to break up all because of repeated small forces that weaken the tissue. Seems like there's a design fault in our joints. Not really. Our knees, like other joints, are designed to absorb many shocks. The space around the joint is filled with a fluid contained within a sheath called the synovial membrane. It acts like a shock absorber, cushioning our joints from impacts. It's just that ballet dancers push their bodies just that little bit further.
But can't we protect our joints against injury? American football players try as hard as possible to protect themselves. No one wears more protective gear than gridiron football. But injuries still happen no matter how much padding you wear. Short of changing the rules of the game, what else can be done? There's three things that we try to do. Number one is, is to work very hard on strength and conditioning. Uh, obviously, we all have a uh, finite strength in our joints in terms of our bones and our ligaments and so forth, our supporting structures. Hey, Let's go. Drive it home. Drive the it home. The only thing that we can do to cushion those joints, whether it be an ankle, or a knee, or a shoulder, is to build up the musculature to the extent that it can withstand more pressure. That, along with uh, good fundamentals to make sure that uh, people block and tackle the appropriate way as to not put themselves in a dangerous situation and then run a drill at a high speed where everybody's at the same speed. If you get one guy going full speed, another guy going half speed, that's when you're going to see injuries happen. Well, I'll tell you exactly what you're going to do. You're going inside right now and I want the doctor to take a look at you tonight before we do anything else. Well, fair enough, but how can ballet dancers protect themselves? The repetitive movements that cause their injuries are what makes ballet, ballet. If you're careful and then you warm up properly, you won't get injuries that often. But if you just jump into class, if you, we call it going to class cold, like if you're just not stretched out and your muscles aren't like warmed up, then you can get injured pretty fast and frequently. Pro right 45, on black, on black, right? But what does this mean for the rest of us? We're not all ballet dancers or football players. We all need to take more exercise because modern life makes us less and less fit. Sport is just one answer. But if we try to get fit and don't learn from sports science, we could end up with a lot of unnecessary injuries.